All right. So I hope you enjoyed that little intro spot there. That was a bit of a project, way more than I think I expected uh, to put together like three minutes of cool <laughs> fall elk video footage. It took quite a few hours. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a lot of work. I got mad respect for professional video editors because they have to do stuff like that all the time and make it look easy. And uh, it's a lot of work and it's difficult and it's creative and uh, I mean, it's fun too. But uh, anyway, mad respect to you like uh, pro video editors who uh, can do that stuff a lot. But anyway, um, let's now move on to kind of part two of this video. First was like the video intro there, a little summary of my fall and some of the video that I shot out there in the field. Uh, and now I'm going to talk just about, I've got a handful of kind of some of my favorite elk photos from this fall that uh, I just wanted to do a quick walk through and talk to you about a few of them. I won't go too deep into these, but um, anyway, let's, let's take a look at some of these and see if there's uh, if something you could learn from these and just kind of talk to you a little bit about the scene and what was happening out there and why I made the photos that I did and the way that I did. So uh, let's start here with this one. I think this is a really cool image. This was a massive snowstorm in October. We had a couple of really big snowstorms in October and this snowstorm was particularly fantastic. I was out there on a workshop with a client and obviously we were both very thrilled to have this opportunity. Uh, we had a herd of elk quite a ways away out in this big meadow and it was just absolutely dumping and we had a really nice bull elk and a, and a big harem of his cows out there uh, just enjoying that snowstorm. Uh, I had my Nikon 500 millimeter PF lens with me and so I, have, I was restricted to that one focal length. Uh, I could have swapped lenses, but that was the longest lens I brought with me that day. So I'm shooting this with the 500 millimeter PF. Uh, this is the, the finished image. And obviously it shows two of the cow elk standing up on their hind legs fighting and then the bull off to the side kind of bugling and uh, talking to his girlfriends. And uh, just shows basically whiteout conditions out there, difficult to focus, so it was a manual focus job on this, and uh, exposure was, at, I think, plus 2.7 on exposure compensation here, uh, shooting an aperture priority, and um, it turned out beautiful. Now, the, the trick with this, this is a pano, uh, this is a panoramic image here, so this is not a single frame, this was two frames, so the first frame that I shot, was this frame. Uh, this is the the two cows standing up. So as I saw the cows stand up to fight, I snapped off a few frames here of them fighting, and then I knew that I wanted the bull in the frame as well. But with that 500 millimeter lens, I could not zoom pull back out to get the bull in the frame. So I immediately decided to do a panoramic stitch with this photo. So after I shot a few frames of these cows fighting and then they went back down, I panned right over uh, just to the left of this image. Now you can see right here where now I've got the herd and the bull out there on the left. So that this was kind of, you know, I knew exactly what I wanted, but with the restriction of the lens that I had, the 500 millimeter, I couldn't get the exact framing that I wanted. So uh, just make a pano there real quick. And it's just a matter of I'm, my focus is locked, my exposure is locked. I go click, 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 click. I'm shooting the scene of those two cow elk standing up fighting. And then once they're done, I know I want the bull in the frame too. I just pan it over, everything's locked, click, click, click. And now I know I can just merge those right together uh, in Lightroom and wham, bam, I've got a beautiful panoramic there that shows the entire scene. So this one turned out great. It's simple. It shows a very dynamic scene, uh, the snowstorm and the elk. It's just, this is fall, right? So I'm very happy with how this image turned out. Uh, next image was a similar, this was, it was taken the same day and uh, the exact same herd, but maybe an hour later, the snow stopped. It started to melt out a little bit and it revealed these lovely fall colors around the elk. So instead of a whiteout like we had before, we've got some snow on the grass, the golden grass in front of the herd, and then we've got the purples and yellows and greens of fall behind them. And then the sky, it's still stormy enough that we can't see the mountains in the far background, but we get that kind of dark, moody sky. 
So this was the exact same thing where I had just done a pano a little while earlier with uh, that in that heavy snowstorm. This is a pano as well. This was uh, four frames stitched together. And basically I just, I locked exposure, locked focus and did a click, 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 click across the seam, merged them together. And now I've got this beautiful panorama with a ton of detail. Like if I zoom in on this elk here, so you can see there's tons of detail here. When I zoom in just on like this bull elk, he's wonderfully sharp. You can see the snow falling out there. Uh, it's uh, a lovely scene. And then I can pan all the way across and look at the, um, the cow elk they're looking at us. But anyway, there's so much detail in this file. It's a huge file because this was uh, four frames on a, on a Nikon D850, which is a high resolution sensor anyways. Uh, and uh, so anyway, I could print this thing 50 feet wide, literally, and it would look pretty good. But, uh, you know, 10, 20 feet wide, it would look awesome as well. So anyway, I, the, the fall colors here, the, the big bull standing off to the side, looking back at his herd, uh, everything here works. And I, I think it turned out just great. Next image is a bugling bull elk. And this time we've got light on him. So this was right as the sun was rising. I had a nice dark background. I'm looking not straight into the sun, but the sun's kind of off to the side. Uh, and so the, the elk is backlit, but I've got just, the sun is just touching the tops of uh, the, the sagebrush out there and it's touching the elk obviously, but the background is a mountain that is in shade, which isn't an accident. Uh, I, I moved until I could position myself to where I have a dark background behind it. And, and that's on purpose because I specifically wanted this foggy look. And so I found this elk and I waited for all these conditions to be right. And I moved and adjusted myself to have that background that I wanted. The light cooperated and then eventually, you know, the elk had been bugling out there quite a few times, but finally I got in the right position with the right background and the right light. And then he let a bugle rip. And of course I went dit 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 dit. And uh, this is the image that I selected that I liked the best with the fog. You know, you get a little puff, bigger puff, bigger puff, bigger puff, and then it starts to fall apart. And this was kind of the, the, the one in the series that I liked the best, that I thought really uh, emphasized the fog. And uh, it worked out wonderfully. This one's obviously very high contrast, um, beautiful light, beautiful animal, and uh, turned out just great. Single frame, of course. And uh, this one was same thing, the Nikon 500 millimeter PF lens, one six fortieth of a second, F5.6 ISO 200. All right. This one, I got another bugling elk. This one is before sunrise. And uh, this one was uh, taken with the, uh, the 600 millimeter F4 at an 80th of a second, ISO 3200. So it's still quite dark here. And uh, I figured I could still get a sharp image at an 80th of a second here as long as the elk is standing still, which it was. And it, they kind of, when they bugle, sometimes they stop and, and then they lift their head and they bugle and they're pretty stationary. You know, their bodies are puffing a little bit. But uh, anyway, this, uh, an 80th of a second seemed to work here and I needed ISO 3200 to make that work. Um, anyway, it's fantastic. So he's actually backlit here because the sun is rising behind me. It just hasn't or behind him, it just hasn't risen yet. So with that backlight, the fog that's coming about out of his mouth kind of lights up. And uh, it, it happened to light up right in front of his face here. I'll zoom in on that. You can see how that looks there. I think it looks pretty cool. I mean, for an 80th of a second ISO 3200, it's pretty darn sharp and the, there's some noise there, but this is zoomed in. You know, a, the, a print this big would be Oh, I don't know. That tall? It'd be six feet tall by four feet wide or so. So, uh, and I think it would print and it would look lovely and that's ISO 3200. So don't be afraid to, you know, push up those ISOs if you need them. Okay. Uh, great photo. Colors were fantastic in that pre-dawn light and all the Alpen glow really gave it a beautiful purpley hue. It was really great. Uh, here we go on to some snowy elk. I'm just going to show you that this was all one morning and I've got one, two, three, four, five images here that were all taken on the same snowy morning. Again, with a workshop client who was super psyched. Uh, really difficult shooting here. It was dark and the snow was coming down so hard it was really difficult to focus. Um, this particular image here was 
uh, waiting, waiting, waiting to get, you know, we have this bull out there running around and waiting for stationary scene where it's not going to be blurry animals, where we had the bull with two of his cows uh, surrounding him, and he's static, so we can get a sharp image there. Um, this one is a 60th of a second, F5.6 ISO 4000. So pretty dark out there, and I uh, had to make a slow shutter speed shot there, and it kind of streaks that snow. It worked out fantastic. Let's move on to the next one. I love this one just with the framing of the bull in the center, and then there's two cows on either side of them. This one is the lone bull, and he's walking through the sagebrush out there in this massive snowstorm bugling. It's him all alone out in this big snowy world. The leg position here was everything, so I'd shoot a burst as he's walking, click, 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 click. And so, you know, some you're going to get legs positions that are all different. And some of them look really awkward, and some of them look really powerful, like this one. This is a very powerful leg position, and that's why I select this image out of that series. Similar situation here, where leg position was everything out of this burst. Well, uh, I like the interaction of having the bull with some of his herd in the scene, and this leg position uh, gives him a real powerful stance and uh, really conveys more of a, a feeling of this bull being the, the leader here. Another one, are you getting the, a theme here of leg position being hyper important? Um, this is again a very powerful leg position as he's bugling right at us. Um, very similar situation, a slower shutter speed. I went to 1 one twenty fifth of a second here and uh, he was closer to us, so those snowflakes are still blurring out quite a bit. ISO 2200, um, but a lovely photo of just the lone bull elk and a powerful stance bugling. So here we go again with another important leg position. This is another one where I was looking for some interaction between two animals, and this is the bull, and I think this is a calf because it's so much smaller, but I do like the interaction of the big bull, the small calf, and then the powerful leg position. Obviously, the snow, the drama, the mood, the weather, everything else there just makes it an excellent image. Um, love it. This one was a 60th of a second, ISO 900, um, F4 on the 600 millimeter F4. So that 60th of a second is blurring that snow out. I think it looks great. I got to sneak in uh, a little ad advertisement here um, in the middle of the video. To let you know, please visit my website when you get a chance um, where you can pick up my book, Phantom of the North, my um, book about great gray owls. And it's fantastic, according to me and pretty much everybody who's, uh, who's got it so far. I'm getting really uh, great feedback on it. So I, I think everybody would enjoy that if you're interested in photography and wildlife. Uh, so please go check that out. It makes a great Christmas gift as well. And also Africa coming up in February. We have some spots available there as well. So please check those out if you want to come do some amazing photography uh, and get some uh, top-notch killer instruction from this guy out in the field. So uh, anyway, back to the video. I got to pay the bill somehow, right? Okay, back to the video. This one was really, really dark. So I'm shooting this one at a 30th of a second, F4, ISO 12,800. So this is as high as I'll push my ISO on this camera, the D850 and it was really, really dark. Uh, the sun hadn't come up yet. I had a really, really dark conifer forest background behind the elk. The sun was coming up from over here, and it, it was still well below the horizon, but that sky is bright enough that it's kicking in a bunch of fill light into that animal and into that fog. And he was really on the move running and bugling like crazy, so he was generating a ton of steam. So here's three images. I'll just run through them with you real quick here. Bang, bang, bang. And these were kind of three of my favorite images out of this series. And look at the leg position here on the first image. You can see that there's all four legs here. The, the fog is super bright white. It's pretty contained still though. There's a little bit kind of floating around his head, but that big main puff coming out of his mouth is really cool. The next frame, his, see how his leg has moved? And now his front legs kind of blend together and it looks like almost one leg. And it's a little more awkward. And then again here, his front legs look even more awkward because it looks like just a one leg. The fog, you know, is billowing out so it's less 
powerful, it's bigger, but it's less intense. So everybody, this is an artistic decision of what you like better here. Uh, I'm going with the first image because I like the light position better and the, the fog is so dense there. It's very bright white in that light. The next frame, I love the fog there as well. If his leg position was a little more dynamic, like the first image, I think I would like that one better. And then the third one, it's pretty cool. He's a little sharper in the third one um, because he's standing more still. At a 30th of a second, in that dark condition, I'm lucky I got anything in focus or even, even reasonably sharp at all. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to have anything out of this series, but uh, I'll let you decide which one you like better there. I think I like the first one. All right, on to this one. This is sunrise again, but right before the sun is coming up, I found another elk bugling and uh, just had a, a little puff of fog that came out of his mouth there that was really powerful and intense. And so as, as that thing shot out in front of him, that was when I made that click because that little puff of fog was so bright and powerful. And then obviously I have the, the layers of um, you know, hills behind him going all the way up into the, the sunrisey sky. So um, I like that, the colors and the, that puff of smoke or that puff of fog. Hashtag bugle fog uh, is what I really like. And then this last one here. So this is a really steamy bull elk. We've got, uh, again, a the sun is pretty much straight behind him here. And uh, I positioned myself exactly for that so I could get the dark mountain that's in the shade behind him. And then he is obviously completely backlit. And then as the sun is hitting him and the, the steam's coming off of this fur and uh, out of his breath, and it really makes for a dramatic photo there. Uh, I love it. I underexpose this scene quite a bit to keep that background really dark. And uh, it turned out wonderful. This one was on the 600 F4. One two thousandth of a second, ISO 200 F4. So that's it. So that, those are some of my favorite elk images that I made this fall. And um, I hope you enjoyed kind of getting a little talk about them a little bit more than just presenting them at the end of the video like I usually do. So a little bit different uh, way of doing things on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.